For this exhibition, Light Paper Process Reinventing Photography, I wanted to look at the work of photographers who had very traditional backgrounds in addressing and celebrating the materiality of the medium. And that is um, really working with light sensitive emulsions and chemical processing, what some people would call analog photography or traditional darkroom photography. In this age where people are increasingly turning towards digital technologies for creating storing and sharing images, I thought it would be really interesting to see those artists who are not turning away from that, but are choosing to hone in on what was essential to the creation of the photographic medium in the beginning, 175, 180 years ago. The exhibition progresses from very abstract images to images that clearly depict landscapes, whether it is Chris McCaw's uh, sunburned landscapes, which trace the passage of the sun across the sky, sometimes from dawn to dusk, sometimes for shorter but extended periods of time, so that the sun appears like a slash or a series of dots in the sky, or John Chiara's landscapes, or the edges of the landscape as it butts up against the built environment of the city, whether that city is San Francisco or Los Angeles. Then there are, are other images like those created by Alison Rossiter on expired sheets of paper that she simply dips into the developer one angle and then another angle and suddenly you feel like you're looking at a hillside or a dunes, a series of dunes, one lined up against the other. And in fact, it's completely abstract, done with very simple traditional darkroom techniques of rocking a tray of developer. It's a version of modernism, if you will, um, a version of saying, all right, let's get to the core of what photography is. Let's strip it of everything down to its essential um, fundamental components and see what we can do with those. It is very interesting that in some cases what we are looking at in the exhibition does not seem to be at all photographic. In one case, for example, the work of Marco Breuer, he talks about having a traditional um, education training as a photographer and working with photographic materials. But the way that he interacts with those materials has very little to do with photography. There are various acts of um, abrading, burning, scouring, scraping to create really what are, are abstract drawings on photographic materials, uh, photographic papers with emulsions, whether they're black and white papers or chromogenic papers, and the results are um, almost magical. They do have photographic elements to them, but they are also um, very unconventional um, uses of photographic materials. In other words, rather than following the instructions that come along with the papers, he tries to do the exact opposite, uh, rather than using the materials correctly, almost abusing them. Well, I like that idea that it is um, fun with chemistry, as well as the introduction of some science into the whole process. Um, and that work might be, be, or that description might best be applied to the work of Matthew Brandt who is almost like a mad scientist in the way that he experiments with antiquated processes, whether it's the salted paper print, um, the heliograph, gum bichromate printing, or even Polaroid. He will tell you he looks up the various recipes or formulas on, on uh, Google and then replicates them using more contemporary materials that are available today and he often incorporates materials that relate directly to the subjects that he's photographing. So for example, if he's making portraits of family members and friends, he might incorporate bodily fluids such as tears or sweat or blood to create the salt component of the salted paper prints that, that create those portraits. For his heliograph series, he's incorporated tar from the Librea tar pits to depict exhibits of prehistoric animals that are in the nearby Page Museum. The series of lakes and reservoirs um, is made by collecting water at the site of the lake that he has photographed in a very traditional 19th century love of the landscape kind of way. 
but then after properly developing and fixing those images, he soaks them in the water that he has collected from the lake. And the sediments in the water begin to erode away the emulsion and create very impressionistic or um, futuristic views of that lake. But you see in each case that it's made from the same negative with these, this sort of double scallop of the hills that you can trace in each one of those depictions. So in this case, um, the artist is using the materials of photography and the materials that went into the creating of those images to degrade the image. John Chiara, who is based in San Francisco and had a traditional background, came upon the idea of creating images of the landscape with large cameras because he wanted to achieve a certain immediacy. The larger the camera, um, the more exact the depiction of the subject. He eventually created a custom-built camera that accommodates sheets of paper 50 by 80 inches. The camera is so large that when he assembles it in order to affix those sheets of 50 by 70 inch paper in the uh, camera, he has to enter into it and he tapes them onto the back side of the camera opposite the lens, the aperture. He does become an extension of the camera and it's really a performance. It involves the sculpture of the camera, uh, the performance, assembling, entering into the camera and standing outside of the camera with filters, dodging and burning with his body um, into a sort of hybrid of photography, sculpture, and performance art. Or you could even say of landscape art as well. Time is a, a really crucial component of the work of most of these artists. Um, it may be in the length of time that it takes to create the work. So Chris McCaw's work in documenting the path of the sun from early morning to evening is all about time and about the specificities of time and place and what the path of the sun looks like. Lisa Oppenheim um, in her heliogram and lunogram series works also with this idea of time um, and collapsing time by using negatives that were created over a hundred years ago, creating new enlarged copy negatives from them and then making contact prints that maybe relate the print today to the lunar cycle from 150 years ago or an image of the sun from 100 years ago. And there's a, there's a tremendous tactility to uh, Lisa Oppenheim's images, which are contact prints from enlarged negatives of the moon and of the sun or of billowing clouds of smoke. Um, but she also tones those images or allows them to solarize so that you get a real, a real sense of their reflective and alchemical qualities, the way that the, the warm tone of the prints of the sun almost feel golden, or the cooler tone of the prints of the moon um, feel silver, the silvery light of the moon. What I hope becomes really clear to people as they move through the exhibition is that each of the artists has a very unique, unconventional approach to the materials, but all of those approaches show a real uh, reverence and respect um, and celebration of the materials of photography and we as viewers get to benefit from that because there's an incredible tactile immediate beauty to the works that they've created and simply asking the question how was it made even if you don't get an immediate answer I think is an important thing today to um, have people look closer.